Hey there, folks. Welcome to another fun at-home table read. Tonight, we're going to attack one of my favorite uh, fictitious biopics, Walk Hard. Uh, we're going to jump right in with our cast. So let's introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Wade. I will be reading Action Description. I'm Logan. I'm going to be reading Dewey. Hey, Angie, I'm reading Darlene. Hi, I'm Mary, and I'm reading Edith. Hi, I'm Nicole. I'll be reading Ma Cox, Sam, and a bunch of others. Uh, I'm George. I'll be playing Pa Cox and a bunch of others as well. Lahayam, bitches! I'm Jen! <laughs> and I'm reading for Lahayam. As well as a dreidel. Hello, hello. Hello, my name is Jeremy. I'm reading for Nate. Hello. hello. Oh, Jeremy, you're a treasure. All right, well, uh, Wade, take us away. Blackness. Cutting through the darkness. Distant applause. Mr. Cox? Mr. Cox? Interior. Music awards. Backstage. Hallway. A man walks backstage at a large awards show, desperately looking for Cox. Mr. Cox? Guys, I need Cox. He goes on in two minutes. I can't find him. The man hurries down a flight of stairs. He passes by a few entertainers before finding the Cox he's been looking for. Mr. Cox? Cox stands in shadow against a wall, deep in thought. Mr. Cox? Sam, the band's drummer, approaches from behind him. You're going to need to give him a moment, son. Dewey Cox needs to think about his entire life before he plays. Cox looks up at the wall, a soulful song filling his head as he begins thinking about his entire life. Flashback. Exterior, Cox Farm, 1946. The sun rises over the old Cox Farm. On screen, Springberry, Alabama, 1946. Interior, Cox Farm, continuous. Dewey, before all the horrors of life, watches his brother Nate absolutely shred Chopin's prelude in G minor. This kid is really fake playing this piano like a champ. The song ends with a small flourish. Come on, Nate, let's go play. I can't, Dewey. Pa Cox, haggard, enters from the screen door. I gotta practice. Can't practice all the time, Nate. You're already perfect. All right, come on, Dewey. Let's go play. Today's gonna be the best day ever. Pa Cox smiles. Yeah, ain't nothing horrible gonna happen today. Exterior, Cox Farm, later. Nate and Dewey walk along the road, calmly talking. You know, like children do. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up, Dewey? I don't know. Never really thunk about it before. When I grow up, I'm going to be a great composer and a professional baseball player. Then I'm going to be an astronaut and I'm going to go to the moon. There's nothing I won't do with this, long, <laughs> with this long, long life. <laughs> okay, red shirt. For sure. That's what's great about being young. There's so much time to do great things. Let's go play. They laugh and take off running. Interior, <laughs> exterior, Cox Farm, montage. Nate runs as a bull chases him, the bull bellowing with fury. My turn! A rattlesnake rattles, and Nate picks the thing up. <laughs> I got him! I got him! He throws the snake to Dewey. Catch! Nate throws the snake to Dewey, who shies away from it. I mean, yeah, it is a rattlesnake. Nate rides a horse. Back, 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 chicken. Dewey rides a small tractor and laughs. The two play chicken, riding towards each other with incredible speed. In the barn, Nate slides down welding goggles while, welding, while wielding a blowtorch. Sparks fly as Nate finishes creating a metal giraffe. Dewey and Nate smile. Interior, Cox Farm, and montage. Nate grabs a sheathed machete and tosses it to Dewey. Nate picks up the other one. I challenge you to a duel, sir. Oh no, Nate. You know how mad Pa gets when we play with his machetes. Come on, Dewey. There's nothing wrong with a little machete fighting. That's what they say. Nate raises his covered blade. Now, unguard. They slap the machetes together for a moment before Nate points his at Dewey. Do you yield, sir? Never! They continue play fighting. 
Prepare to meet your face. Oh, you. Okay. Dewey winds up, and the sheath flies off the machete. Nate brings his up over his head, and Dewey swings with all his child might. The blade slides right through Nate with a loud squish. Nate groans for a moment before suddenly getting shorter. Nate's top half sits on the floor next to his bottom half, which is still standing. Dewey! Dewey is shocked. Nate! I'm halved! Oh, we should have listened to Paul. Dewey, I'm cutting half pretty bad. In case I don't make it, then you'll have to be double great for the both of us. Wow. It's a lot of pressure, Nate. You can handle it, Dewey. Now run, get Pa. Dewey drops the machete and runs. Nate's legs finally fall over. Holy shit. <laughs> Interior, Cox Farm, that night. A doctor leaves Nate's room, medical bag in hand. Pa Cox stands by the fire with Ma Cox, the lovely character actress, Margot Martindale, and his sister. This was a particularly bad case of somebody being cut in half. I was not able to reattach the top half of his body to the bottom half of his body. Speak English, Doc. We ain't scientists. I'm sorry, folks. He's just... Well, shit, he's gone. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. Pa Cox turns to face Dewey. It's all your fault, Dewey Cox. Oh, Pa, you don't mean that. It's not his fault. He cut him in half with a machete. No. You. You're not half the boy that Nate was. You're not even half the boy that the top half of Nate was after you cut him in half. So you're saying I'm less than a quarter of the boy Nate was? Pa steps back and decides his catchphrase for the next 40 years. The wrong kid died. Pa walks off as Dewey stops and sniffs his armpits. Ma, I can't smell anything. Can't smell anything? I think I lost my sense of smell. You gonna smell blind, son. She hugs her boy tight. It'll pass, Dewey. Now run on down to the country store and get us some butter and a candle. We're going to light us a candle tonight. Interior, country store, later. A few grizzled old blues players strum away at an old guitar. I'm a gambling man. I gamble everywhere I go. Dewey perks up at hearing the music. I'm a gambling man, Lord, I gamble from door to door. The little ditty finishes, and Dewey is enthralled. I never heard mu uh, no music like that before. It's so sad. That's why it's called the blues, boy. I think I'd like to play me some blues. Ain't no six-year-old boy understand the true meaning of the blues. I reckon I might. You play the guitar? Never have before, but I'm a real fast learner. Well, go ahead. The old blues traveler hands Dewey the guitar and shows him a quick chord. Put your finger right up there. You place your hands here. That's it. That's the G chord. Now hit the strings with your other hand. Dewey slaps the strings and it is not pretty. The Blues Brothers cringe. Dewey adjusts his grip and tries again. The chord sings out beautifully. That's it. There you go. Dewey starts into a blues riff, life already full of hardships. Yep, just like that. Dewey opens his mouth to sing, voice like an aged blues man. I done a bad thing, cut my brother in half. 
It's not bad for your first time. From the side, Nate's ghost watches on. You can do it, Dewey. You'll be double great for the both of us. Dewey smiles and continues playing. Cut to interior, Springberry High School, years later. It's the night of the talent show, 1953. Ma Cox scoots through the kids backstage, looking for Dewey. Dewey? A goat bleats somewhere backstage. Dewey! She enters a doorway and hears a guitar strumming. Dewey! She finds Dewey, looking like a grown-ass John C. Riley. He stands with his hand, prepping for the show. He stands with his band, prepping for the show. Dewey turns to face his mother. Mama, you made it. There's my favorite 14-year-old son. She comes in and starts fawning affection all over him. Well, come on now, not in front of the fellas. Howdy, boy. Howdy, Miss Fox. I just wanted to say, break a leg. I know you boys are going to play a real good song. Oh, thanks, Ma. I'm just so proud. You learned to play the guitar so good. Without having a the sense of smell. Well, that's all right now, Ma. I learned to play by ear. You just go out there and you, you sing your heart out, you hear? I will, Mama. Interior, Springberry High School, on stage. A girl taps along in a jaunty routine. Dewey and his band watch from the wings. She finishes with a small pose. How are we going to follow that? The ghost of the talent show grabs the... The host of the talent show grabs a mic and walks to center stage. The crowd applauds. Delilah Montgomery, everybody. Delilah Montgomery. Very nice. And now, sophomore Dewey Cox is going to sing us a song. So, ladies and germs. The crowd chuckles. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Please welcome Dewey Cox and the Dewey Cox Four. The audience applauds as they take the stage. Ma claps loudly as Pa looks pissed. Dewey taps the mic. Hi, my name is Dewey Cox, and this is a little song I wrote called Take My Hand. I sure hope you like it. Wrong kid died, goddammit. The band starts up a happy tune. Take 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 my hand take my hand we're gonna walk through the park i promise to have you home before dark in the crowd various teens stand and start dancing along to the music home before dark three women eye the stage lustily oh life would be so sweet Walking with you down the street. The parents look around in concern. Oh, baby. This music is an outrage. Come on and take my hand. The three women all tear open their shirts for Dewey. It's the devil's music. One of the teens next to the priest winds back and punches him in the face. It's all right if you're coy. A fight starts breaking out. Someone vomits. After all, I'm a boy. The dancing starts taking a 1950s erotic turn. The Cox parents look at each other, confused. And you're a girl, but make no mistake. Dewey turns to Edith, a young Christian Whig in the audience. Yours is the hand I want to take. Edith raises her hands in love. Dewey winks at Edith as the band continues. Exterior, Cox Farm, later. An angry mob has gathered outside the farmhouse. You're going to hell! Someone holds up a sign reading God Hates Rock and Roll and Dewey Cox. Another reads Satan Music. Peppered throughout the crowd are teens rebelliously smoking. Interior, Cox Farm, continuous. Dewey looks out the window with his sisters as Pa enters. That's it. I want you out of this house, boy. Oh. You heard the preacher. 
You think we don't know what you're talking about when you say, take my hand? What do you mean? It's about holding Watch hands. You know who's got hands? The devil. And he uses them for holding. I ain't got no room in my house for no devil spawn. Paul, be careful now, you hear? Before you say something, you're going to regret for the rest of your life. Like what? Days. Like the wrong kid died? Oh, no. No. It's okay. It's okay, Mama. Settle down. Paul's right. Springberry ain't big enough for me no more. I reckon it's time for Dewey Cox to move on. But you're only 14. Mama, I love you, but I don't need nobody. All I need is my music. I've seen my path today and I'm going to take it. And someday I'll make my masterpiece and you'll all be proud of me. Just like you were of Nate. Can I come, Dewey? Well, of course you can, Edith. You're my girlfriend. I am? Well, yes, yeah, silly. I pointed to you at Did the audience. Did you hear that? I'm Dewey's 12-year-old girlfriend. You're the most talented man I've ever seen in my whole life. And you will never get any but unconditional love and support from me for you and your dreams for the rest of my life. Well, then, go on. Get out of this house before I cut your dreams in half like you cut mine in half. Goodbye, Paul. Just wait till you see what happens now. Edith legit starts growling at Pa as we cut to interior Leroy's lounge later. Here we go. Bobby Shad and the Bad Men are playing Jump Little Children as club goers dance all over the dance floor. As they play away, Dewey sweeps the floors. We're gonna jump on children and mama papa go. The dancers are grinding and doing everything but fucking on the dance floor. Dewey tr tries to sing along to himself, practicing. You know what I said? We're gonna jump little children and mama papa go. Chad finishes up the tune with an energetic flourish. The audience applauds, Dewey among them. My name is Bobby Chad, and these are the bad men. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back to rock till the morning light. All right? Dewey talks along with him, trying to figure out stage presence. Bobby chef kisses at the audience and leaves the stage. Dewey walks behind him in the small hallway. Mr. Shad? Mr. Shad? Wow, that was really great. Hey, you know, I play a little guitar, and if you ever need a... Dewey. Dewey jumps and crosses to his boss. Yes, sir. I pay you to mop the floor, not bother the band. My customers come here to dance erotically, and they need a clean floor to do it on. Now, are you going to do your job, or am I going to find somebody who will? Yes, sir. Interior, Dewey's house, later... Dewey strums away at a guitar, sitting next to a crib, yodeling. Low, oh, ooh, some blue. In the other room, Edith is feeding a baby, growing annoyed. Dewey, will you cut out that racket? I'm trying to feed your child. Well, how am I supposed to make it as a famous musician if I don't practice? Will you stop talking about music? But it's my dream, baby. The baby starts crying. Daddy said if we move back, he could give you a permanent job at Slaughterhouse. You can make an honest living. Wouldn't you hang your head in shame walking around like some kind of failure? I think I'm doing okay for a 15-year-old with a wife and a baby. Ain't no musician ever made no money, Dewey. Edith, I'm starting to think that maybe you don't believe in me. Edith rests her hand on his shoulder lovingly. I do believe in you. I just know you're going to fail. What are you talking about, Edith? What about my dreams? Edith, I told you I can't build you a candy house. It'll fall down. The sun will melt the candy. It won't work. It will if it never rains. Now, you listen to me. I'm going to make this dream come true. Nobody ever said it's going to be easy. It's hard. It ain't easy to walk to the top of a mountain. It's a long, hard walk. It's a rocky road. But I plan on walking. Oh, I'm going to walk hard. I will walk hard. A strum of inspiration. Walk hard. Roll credits. 
I got a full house come tonight. Interior Leroy's Lounge that night. The manager is yelling at the bad men. If Bobby Shad can't play, I need to find someone who can. He says, oh, I can play through the bank. He holds up taped hands. Maybe you should have thought about this before you punched your landlord while you got the laryngitis. I guess there's no music tonight, boss. Bull hickey. People come here to dance erotically like it's fucking footloose and some shit. I ain't got no music. I ain't got no nightclub. Dewey perks up. Uh, excuse me. The manager turns to face him. I, I play a little. I don't know how to tell you this, boy, but you're white. This crowd will eat you alive. L I've been watching Mr. Shad every night. I know all the songs. It'll be the same show. It'll be just like Bobby Shad and the Batman, only it'll be me tonight. This is crazy, but I ain't got no other choice. Interior. <clears throat> Interior. Leroy's Lounge. Later. The place is packed. Dewey plucks at a guitar, still wearing his hairnet. Well, I don't mean to put more pressure on you, boy, but this suit's from the record company just got here. Dewey looks so. to the door and sees three Hasidic Jews, including Harold Ramis and Martin Starr. Oh, okay. Sam, years younger than when we saw him last, comes up behind Dewey, patting his shoulder. Aaron? A little. Well, you should be. Those Jews control show business. Just lay down exactly like Bobby does. Dewey exhales. Moments later, on stage, Dewey stands at the mic, band at his back. Good evening. We're Bobby Shad and the Bad Men. I'm Dewey Cox. Bobby Shad couldn't be here tonight, so I'm going to do his show for you. And I hope you enjoy it. The piano plays a small intro, and Dewey shifts into his Bobby Shad. All right, this first song we're fitting to do is, uh, <laughs> well, it's about when your lady catches you. The crowd looks at Dewey in disbelief. You know, she catch you running around town getting all kinds of strange. Sam is confused, but then again, this is exactly what he told Dewey to do. And she says, son, get your lazy two-timing ass up out of here. The piano player stops and looks at him. The crowd murmurs. And you say to her. The crowd looks ready to jump the stage as the band kicks in with a ripping tune. Dewey is actually selling the hell out of it. The crowd listens a beat. After the first bar or two, they hear the song still kicks. The crowd starts dancing away as the record company execs watch on. Bobby Shad stares angrily from the side of the stage. Interior, Leroy's Lounge, after the show. The record execs stand talking to the band. I like what you did out there tonight. Have you ever made a recording? Oh, Mr. Lahai, Mr. Mosseltoff, that, that's been my dream. Bobby Shad comes up to them. It's not the one you want. Not the one you want. I think he's the one that we want. You've got the nice thing. He's not so bad with the singing and the playing and the shaking of the tuckets. We love the tuckus. Uh, I think we've, uh, you've got what it takes to make it in the big time. Mm -hmm. The big time? Interior, recording studio, days later. The guitar strums out a folksy rendition of That Samore. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's Samore. The recording engineer looks on in almost disgust. When the world seems to shine. Whoa, what the, what the hell is this? Pizza pie. What's in a pizza pie? Mm -hmm. Bells will ring, tang a lang a lang, tang a lang a lang, and you'll sing. Oh, all right, hold, 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 please, hold, please, stop that. Stop your, stop your singing. Stop, stop your singing. This instant, young man. I, I will not have this in my studio. Uh, maybe it was the wrong song choice. If you just let me play one of my songs that I wrote, I, I think you'll like it a whole lot better. You, you have failed conclus conclusively. It, it's over, and there is nothing that you can do here in this room that can turn that around. Nothing. 
you can do that can make up for what you just did to that Samori? Well, my, my mother liked it a whole lot. Your mother was wrong. I was, I was willing to open up my mind because these Jewish gentlemen brought you in here. They usually have good taste, and now here you are in front of me, pretending you can sing, and I have to say that today, your perform performance has shaken my belief in the Jewish people. Well, sir, there, there's nothing like I would, I would more than to restore, restore your faith in Judaism right now, if you just give me that shot. But I'll tell you, you have failed so far, and if somehow you are able to sing a song now, bringing these boys together you haven't even met. The piano and bass player look at each other. They just met this Cox 10 minutes ago. And make something so personal, so new, that the whole world takes notice, and that your life is never the same again. But I'm telling you right now, I don't think it's going to happen. Wait, 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 wait. We're here already. What could it possibly hurt? Well, Chaim, I'll do it for you. But just one more song. All right. The engineer turns back to Dewey. All right, son. I'm going to give you 15 more seconds. Dewey sighs. Uh, thank you, sir. I, I hope you won't regret it. Dewey straps his guitar on as Theo, the bass player, leans in. Dewey, we don't know this song. Dewey leans in dramatically. You just follow me. Dave, on piano, shakes his head. I don't know. Dewey nods to Sam, who also has never heard this song before. Dewey begins strumming out a simple melody full of feeling. Walk hard. The recording engineer turns to face Lahaim, looking impressed. Hard. Walk hard. Down life's rocky road. A few workers poke their heads into the room to listen as the bass joins in. Teens run and gather from outside, only hearing slightly. Walk bold. Hard. That's my creed. The piano jumps in. My co -oh. Drums jump in as they continue. Dewey sings as Dave and Theo try to figure out the lyrics on the fly. I've been scorned and slandered and ridiculed too. Had to struggle every day my whole life through. In the booth, the engineer dances energetically with the Jews. See my share of the worst that the world can give. But I still got a dream and a burning rage to live. Dead. Walk hard. A record is recorded. Interior radio station. Jack McBrayer, the immortal, spins at a console. Here is America's new hit song, Walk Hard, recorded just 35 minutes ago by Dewey Cox. The song plays all over the country. And as the teens hear the lyrics, they can't help but dance. Exterior radio station. As song plays, montage. Dewey leaves the station and is mobbed by fans. There he is! They all carry his record. Interior, Cox Farm, montage. Ma Cox and one of Dewey's sisters dance to the song on the radio as Pa sits sulking. Various locations, montage. As Dewey plays Walk Hard on a small tour, it climbs the chart, charts, reaching at number four. The band poses for magazine shoots and album covers. A shot is snapped, and the image becomes the cover of Daddy-O magazine. A redhead teen has Cox taped to her wall beside photos of James Dean. He walked so hard. Interior recording studio montage. Dewey and the band still play. How do I walk, boys? Hard. hard. Dewey is handed car keys as the crowd of fans grows. Dewey buys a new house for Edith. Edith sits with a baby in her arms and a baby next to her. She's covering her eyes. After a beat, she drops her hands as Dewey walks in with a chimp. Hello! A monkey? Walk Hard climbs to number one. Dewey and the band sit around a dining table with their wives. A giraffe leans in as Dewey lifts a carrot. Oh, hey, Shorty. Mwah. Hello, my darling. See, I sang a song at a circus in New Jersey. They said, we'll give you five grand. I said, no, you won't. You'll, you'll give me that giraffe. <laughs> and they did. They gave it right to me. That's one beautiful giraffe. Thank you. Montage ends. Interior Cox House. Later, three babies stand in a crib crying. 
It'll just be, I'm sorry. It'll just be a few weeks, Edith. Who's gonna help me take care of the children? Edith enters the room behind Dewey, two more children in her arms. Dewey, you have got to give up on this dream. You're never gonna make it give up, Dewey. What are you talking about? I got a number one hit on the radio. I mean, I'm playing my music for people who want to hear me. It's everything we always wanted, Edith. I never see you anymore. And your kids never see you anymore. I don't know how to tell you this. I'm going to miss some things, okay? I'm going to miss some birthdays. I'm going to miss some christenings. I'm going to miss some births, period, okay? It's unrealistic that I'm going to be here every time you have a baby. One of the babies cries. But aren't you happy? You have your beautiful new home, all your fancy new clothes, your monkey and your giraffe. And look, what, what, what else do you need? How, how about if I get you like a, like, a, like a crow that could talk and I'll teach him phrases that I say. Like a morning, honey, but it'll be a little crow talking. This ain't about no exotic pets. It's about love, you stupid piece of shit. She sobs and leaves the room. Do we? Interior, music hall, night. Later. The crowd is going nuts. The marquee reads, Tonight, Elvis Presley and others. On stage, the Big Bopper is in the middle of his show. Hello, baby. Yeah, this is the Big Bopper speaking. Oh, you sweet thing. Backstage, Dewey watches, looking more and more disheartened. Do I what? How am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> Uh, don't worry, dude. You'll do great. Oh, thanks, buddy, Holly. If you don't, I'll, I'll pick it right back up. You got nothing to worry about. Oh, thanks, man. I'm awful nervous, buddy, Holly. Uh, Dewey, you'll be fine. And my name's not Buddy Holly. We get it. You're Frankie Munez. From behind them, a man from the crew who looks a lot like some guy from an office walks up, although he might be rocking a little bit of a hangover. All right, change of plans. Uh, Elvis wants to get out of here. He's hungry, so we're going to change the order. Uh, so after the big bopper, it's Buddy Holly, then Elvis Presley, and then you, Dewey Cox. So so it's the, the big, big bopper, and then Buddy Holly, and then Elvis Presley, and, and then me? Yeah, just for tonight. So on a normal night, Buddy Holly's in the middle? That feels right. Well... I'm just happy to be here. Dewey is scared to tears and runs off. Interior music hall later. Elvis runs off stage as the crowd loses their minds. Dang, Elvis Presley, you didn't have to rile him up like that. Elvis turns, upset. What now? No, I'm... I'm... Elvis gets up close to Dewey. Excuse me, what? I'm saying we, we got to follow that. <laughs> Listen to this right now. There, there are two things being know. All right. Elvis counts them off. <clears throat> One, I am the king. Number two is, we got to land. Elvis chops at Dewey's neck. Dewey jumps in fear. Look at that coming out of you. You see that? It's called karate, man. There are only two kinds of people I know. The Chinese and the king. And I'm one of them. You're the king. Now, come on, all right, all right, all right. Look, look at it. Elvis chops again before walking away with his entourage. <laughs> well, thanks, Elvis. Elvis flirts easily with one of the groupies. She swoons. Let's go. Come on, Mom. Dewey turns to Theo. The fuck was he talking about? Cut to on stage moments later. Dewey stands at the mic. How y'all doing? My name is Dewey Cox. Hey, listen, folks. I, I'd like to play a song I wrote for a very special lady. I'm talking about Mrs. Dewey Cox. The crowd awes. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a perfect life, and you are the perfect wife. But I don't know why I sit and cry. The girls in the audience swoon. And now I miss you so. 
Please don't let me go. I make mistakes and that is true. At least I learn each time that I do. Darling, you must believe I could never leave you if I tried. A life without you is no life at all. Cut to interior music hall backstage. The band leaves the stage with smiles wide, <laughs> Dewey close behind. Wow, great playing, boys. The Phillies love you, Dewey. Yeah, if I wasn't a married man with a good head on my shoulders, I don't know what I'd do. You gotta get back out there, Dewey. They're going crazy. Oh, let, let me splash some water on my face. I'll be right back. Dewey hands the man his guitar and runs off. Okay, hurry up. Golly, that rock and roll. The man laughs to himself. Interior, music hall, bathroom, moments later. Dewey pushes through the door to find Sam smoking weed with a few groupies. Sam turns to face Dewey. Get out of here, Dewey! What are y'all doing in here? We're smoking reefer, and you don't want no part of this shit. You're smoking reefers? Yeah, of course we are. Can't you smell it? No, Sam. I can't. Come on, Dewey, join the party. No, Dewey, you don't want this. Get out of here. You know what? I, I don't want no hangover. I can't get no hangover. It doesn't give you a hangover. W will I get addicted to it or something? It's not habit forming. Oh, okay. Well, well I don't know. I don't want to overdose on it. You can't OD on it. It's not going to make me want to have sex, is it? It makes sex even better. Sounds kind of expensive. It's the cheapest drug there is. Dewey weighs these options. Hmm. You don't want it. I think I kind of want it. Okay, but just this one. Come on in. Dewey closes the door and joins them. So what do I do? Like this. She takes a drag off the joint and hands it to Sam. Then she places her arms around Dewey's shoulders and blows it seductively into his mouth. Dewey inhales as the girl backs away, smiling. Dewey holds the smoke and exhales. A slow smile crosses his face. He chuckles. Oh my. Interior hotel room later. Dewey sits up in bed, talking on the phone. Yeah, well, the tour's going real great, baby. Yeah, we're making a real, we're having a real nice time. A blonde rests her head on Dewey's shoulder. Yeah, the boys have been playing real great, and the audience has been just wonderful, so. Interior, Dewey's house, intercut. Edith is on the phone, holding a baby. A nanny holds two more behind her. When you coming home, Dewey? Oh, soon, baby. Real soon. Interior, hotel room, intercut. The lamp in the hotel room has lace and a bra draped over it. Dewey sits in his tidy whities We just got hit the major markets in the, in the Northeast and Chicago, Detroit. Sam sits up from the floor. Dewey, could you shut up? Two women sit up on either side of Sam. I'm trying to have sex with these women down here. Who's that? Oh, that's a, that, that, that's Sam. He's, he's just looking for his drumsticks. There has clearly been an orgy in this room. The room is littered with the naked members of the band and several stark roadies. Theo plays a solitaire as Dewey takes the phone to the foot of the bed and sits down. Every beat or so, another naked roadie crosses Dewey's field of view. Anyway, anyway, baby, you, you don't want to hear about all this, all this boring stuff. How was your day? Oh, you know, just taking care of the kids. Uh, went down to Wilson's Market the other day to pick up some milk. They were just completely out of milk. A naked roadie, Bert, dick in Dewey's face, walks up. Yes, Bert? You want a cup of coffee or something? No, thank you. Who's that? Oh, that's that's uh, Bert, my roadie. He just wants to know if I want any coffee or, or anything like that. Bert's dick is literally a foot from Dewey's ear. Dewey, there's a distance growing between us. I feel, and I, I don't like it. Oh, no, that, that, that's crazy talk, Edith. You know I'm just the same old Dewey. Huh? 
Hey, Dewey. Yes, Bert? Can you see my sandal? I don't know. I'm talking to my wife. There is a knock at Dewey's hotel room door. Hey, baby, there's somebody at the door. Listen, I, I gotta go. C- can I call you when we get to New Jersey? Okay. Bye. Okay. I, I love you. All right. I-, I love you. I love you. You're never gonna make it, okay? Okay, bye. Bye. Interior hotel room moments later, Dewey opens the door to see his father. Paul. Dewey. What are you doing here? A naked groupie looks out into the hallway. It's about your mama. Ma? What about her? Is she okay? The girls looking out are joined by the naked Bert, and Pa looks confused. Dewey looks back and moves his father into the hallway. Better step out into the hall. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. We were ready and for bed when your song comes on the radio. Interior Cox Farm. Back when? It's Dewey. Ma Cox turns up the radio as Walk Hard plays. She looks at Pa, who sits scowling in his chair. Your son is so talented. You should be proud. Well, I must admit, it is kind of catchy. Nice with me, Pa. Pa smiles for the first time since Nate was cut in half and stands to dance with Ma. It does make you kind of want to move, doesn't it? It sure does. They laugh and dance happily. You know, maybe I have been kind of hard on little Dewey. Maybe you have. (laughs) Pa spins Ma and her feet get a little tangled in the cord of the radio. Be careful, Ma. He tumbles backwards out the window, crashing to the ground below. Whoa, are you all right, Ma? I'm all right. She starts to pick herself up. As she rises, the cord wraps around the cord wrapped around her yanks the radio from the wall. It topples out the window after her, crashing into her head. She falls dead. Interior hotel room present. Dewey can't believe it. She lost her balance, it fell out the window, and then the radio crushed her head. While she was dancing to your song, I thought you should know what your music does. It kills people. You made it happy and it killed her. If Nate were alive, this never would have happened. Paul walks away as Dewey starts to break down. He pops back into the hall and stares Dewey down. Wrong kid died. Dewey sobs in the hallway. Interior hotel room bathroom moments later, Dewey opens the bathroom door to find Sam doing coke off of the sink with a couple of groupies. Get out of here, Dewey! What are y'all doing in here? Woo! It's called cocaine, and you don't want no part of this shit. Cocaine? Sam nods happily. What's it do? It turns all your bad feelings into good feelings. It's a nightmare. I'm thinking maybe I'd like to try me some of that cocaine. He enters the bathroom and closes the door. Interior, empty music hall, later. Dewey races the band through Walk Hard faster and faster. He is coked out of his mind. Theo and Dave struggle to keep up with the tempo as Sam plays along effortlessly. Walk hard, 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 walk hard, 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 walk hard. The guitar screeches feedback. All right, again, faster. Ain't nobody gonna want to listen to music like this. You're standing there playing as fast as you can, singing like some sort of punk. Don't you dare try to stifle me. Whose band is this anyway, you cocksucker? I'll punch you in the mouth. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Dave. Dewey goes in for a big hug. (laughs) No, I I didn't mean that. I'm just, with my mama dying and all, I'm I'm all twisted up inside. Mr. Cox? In the aisle stands Darlene. Dewey turns to face her. I heard you were looking for a new backup singer for your new duet. You heard right. I was wondering if you might like to give me a try. I reckon I might. Dewey helps her up on stage. One of the backup singers rolls her eyes. I've been singing in my church choir since I was a girl. 
I like the sound of that. Darlene Madison. Dewey Cox. And with that, the duet and montage begin. Interior, exterior, various, duet, montage. Dewey and Darlene sing together into a mic. Hello, Darlene. Hello, Mr. Cox. You ready to sing one? I'm always ready. Well, all right. In my dreams, you're blowing me. Some kisses. That's one of my favorite things to do. You and I could go down in history. That's what I'm praying to do with you. Let's do it in ways that make us feel good. As the song continues, Dewey and Darlene duck backstage. Darlene runs up to Dewey and pulls him into a kiss. She shoves him back. Oh. She slaps him once, twice. Dewey Cox, I am not that kind of woman. Another slap. Well, all right. Well, that doesn't mean we still can't be friends. Okay. Well then, here's to us being great friends. She puckers up for another kiss. He moves in. She pushes him off. I can't. We're friends. Another slap. They continue singing. I just want to beat off all my demons. They pray in church, clearly lusting after another. That's what loving Jesus is all about. The pair walk down the sidewalk, each eating an ice cream cone erotically. He tongues the cone and she puts the ice cream in her mouth. <laughs> Looking in your eyes, I start believing. Let's bring this whisper to a shout. Darlene and Dewey work with wood. Heh. Darlene saws as Dewey hammers something. Let's do it in ways that make us feel good. They are both enjoying this woodworking a little too much. Put two and two together, perfect harmony we found. Dewey is standing down a chair leg, practically jerking it. Dewey and Darlene ride horses, showcasing their riding techniques. We know it's only natural. Let's, Let's do it. They sing on stage. I just want to make out what you're saying. Read my lips is what you're looking for. Here I am a sneaking up behind you. You can always come in my back door. Dewey helps Darlene off a horse. Let's do it. There's another intimate moment here between the two. They move in, almost kissing. Darlene looks away, and Dewey moves back, kicking himself. Darlene, these last three weeks have been so full and wonderful. We've shared so many activities together as good friends. It's like you understand me the way nobody else ever has. Darlene smiles wide. I mean, if I... Dewey glances aside and catches a look at a gleaming machete. He hears the blade ring and screams, the memories. He falls back towards a bench. Darlene rushes to his side. What is it, Dewey? I, I don't know. It's, it's nothing. I'm fine. Nothing? You look like you're seeing a ghost. I got a lot of pain in me, Darlene. You should know that. Where did all the pain come from, Dewey? Did you ever have something that you really loved that, that you accidentally killed or, or hurt in some way with a machete? No. No, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible though? How would you live with yourself? I know, right? Exactly. Interior, dance hall, later. Dewey is back on stage with the band, singing a new song. Darling, Darlene, Darling, Darlene. Darling rockets to number one on the charts. I'm in love with you. I'm having fun with you. I'm in love with you. I'm on the run with you. I'm in love with you. And I'll be one with you one day. The crowd cheers as Dewey smiles, winking to Darlene. 
interior bus that night. Thanks for letting me sleep in your bunk, Dewey. Gotta sleep somewhere, right? <laughs> Darlene is laying right on top of Dewey, practically kissing him. They linger here for a long moment, lips almost touching. Dewey, I can't. Uh, I know, I know. We both know that sexual that the sexual tension between us is palpable. Don't you know that I wrestle with the same temptations you do? I know I shouldn't be saying this to you, do we? Because we are not married. Down below, Theo listens to the conversation. And we are just friends, but sometimes I lay awake at night, aching for a man's touch. And by man's touch, I mean penis and vagina. It's just so silly. Theo plays with his nipples. Oh, that is so silly. Well, better get some sleep. Okay. They spoon on the small cot. She grabs his hand and holds it to her chest. Take my hand, Dewey. Let's promise to never, ever give in to our inner lesser desires. After all, we are not married. Dewey realizes something. Interior wedding chapel later. Dewey and Darlene run happily down the aisle, having just been married. A small wedding march plays. Interior, honeymoon suite. Later, Dewey looks, uh, Darlene looks at her wedding ring. Darlene looks at her wedding room as a toilet flushes. I'm ready for six. Dewey comes out of the bathroom wearing his boxers and a bathrobe. Darlene is lounged across the bed in a negligee. I've been waiting for this for so long. Me too, from the moment I laid eyes on you. Dewey saunters toward the bed, stopping to prance and snort for a beat like a horse. Oh my, Dewey, I'm so nervous. Don't worry, Angel. I'll show you the ways of love. He lays back, and Dewey pulls off his pants. whoops a day! He pulls Darlene's legs toward him. Dewey kisses at her feet in his hands. Oh, Dewey. Edith enters the room, bags in hand. Edith! Edith's bags drop. Who are you? I'm his wife, that's who I am. No, you're not. I'm his... Dewey looks to her, forgiveness in his eyes. Good Lord, you're already married? I can explain. Explain to her? You should explain to me. I'm the mother of your children. Well, it's not what it looks like. You have children? Darling, that's not what it looks like. Not what it looks like to me, or not what it looks like to her? Yeah, it's got to be one way. Looks like it. It's got to be the way it looks like to at least one of us. We're married. I did the right thing. It's not like we're not married. If you're already married, you can't get married again. I know, I know. And that was wrong, but it's just, we were such good friends, and... You told me about that dream where you were licking my balls and that seemed like a signal and... He turns to face Edith. I forgot. Uh, I am leaving you do it, Cox, and I will see you in court. No, Edith, don't go! The door slams. He turns to face Darlene, still holding her feet. Oh, well, she's gone now. I'm leaving too. You got the order of things all backwards. Darlene leaves the suite. Darlene, don't go! Edith, don't go either! Exterior, Dewey's house the next morning. Dewey runs down the street towards his house. I made a mistake. I made a terrible mistake. He approaches the porch. Edith! 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 She's loading kids into the car. She sees Dewey coming and storms back to the house. Leave me alone, Dewey! Honey, I meant no harm to you. Interior, Dewey's house, continuous. Edith tears into the house, Dewey on her heels. Edith, cupcake baby, you don't know what it's like out there on the road. It's lonely there, Edith. Edith, I can't be alone. Maybe you should have thought of that before you went and got double married. Is that what this is about? Well, don't you stand there and judge me like I'm some kind of criminal. You are a criminal. This is illegal, Dewey. What do you mean it's illegal? It's illegal to be married to two people at the same time, Dewey. What about if you're famous? Is that? Edith walks out. Exterior, Dewey's house, continuous. 
Edith heads toward the car, the giraffe grazing on the lawn. So you never done nothing you shouldn't have done to me. What have I ever done to you? Like like that time you woke up in the middle of the night and drank up all the milk. I got my cornflakes, there's none left. Oh, shit. That's not the giraffe behind Dewey. It's a camel. Dewey, you cheated on me. Right, back on top. Oh, so so I'm a cheater, but you can just drink up all the milk and that's fine. Okay, all right, that's fine. I get it. You're innocent and I'm guilty. He raises his hand. Guilty as charged. Inspiration. Guilty as charged. Don't you dare write a song right now, Dewey. Interior, Dewey's house. Edith walks back in. You know what? Go ahead. Take the children. I don't care. The chimp puts down his little guitar. All I need is my music. I don't need you. He points around the room to a few of his kids. And I don't need you. And I don't need you. And I don't need you. You're just sitting there all high and mighty in your diaper. If anything, you need me. You're just a baby. (laughs) Come on, Miles. The chimp, Miles, chitters. Don't you dare take Miles. You can take the children, but you leave me my monkey. Fine. Goodbye, Dewey Cox. She leaves the house, and Dewey drops to his knees in the doorway. No, come back. Don't leave me, Edith. Don't leave me, Edith. There's a title for a song. (laughs) She leaves Dewey crying in the doorway. (laughs) That's not a bad title, but please don't leave me. Dewey sobs. What have you done? Interior, Dewey's house, bathroom, moments later. Dewey rages. Dewey angrily breaks the bathroom mirror, throwing the tchotchkes off the sink and tearing the sink from the wall. As water pours from the wall, trumpets begin on Dewey's new song. Interior, exterior, guilty as charged montage. Dewey rides the tour bus with Miles and the band. I'm telling you, I've had it. I've had it with all this crap. You took your side every time. All you care about is fruit and touching yourself. Well, fuck you. Dewey gets up and crosses to the bathroom. He opens the door to find Sam about to take something. Get out of here, Dewey. You don't want no part of this shit. What are y'all doing in here? Some pills, uppers and downers. They're the next logical step for you. I want some of them shit. Dewey enters the bathroom. Dewey dances on stage in a mariachi costume. He spins and grabs the mic. Good morning, Your Honor. May I approach the bench? Mariachi trumpets spark up and Dewey claps along. I don't give a damn what anyone thinks. The band mean mugs the audience. I stay up all night and I smoke and I drink. Dewey shimmies. I'm a wanted man and I'm blowing town. Don't waste your time trying to hunt me down. Dewey takes the stage wearing shades. He stands at the mic before passing out. The band rushes to help him. He jumps up. The cops are saying I belong behind bars. Dewey starts swinging fists, ready to fight. He goes back to the mic. Uh, One, two, three. And Dewey passes out again. And I'm guilty. 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 I'm guilty as charged. Theo and Dave sit together on the bus. Does Dewey seem unhappy to you? Dewey sobs. He's changed, I tell you. He's changed. That was early Dewey. This is middle Dewey. A girl grinds on top of Dewey, who wears shades. Dewey, are you enjoying yourself? What? I'm sorry, I forgot you were here. Dewey walks with Dave backstage, each with their arm around a girl. Hey, Dave, I like your girl better. Let's switch. Well, Dewey, this is my wife. Oh, nice to meet you. Well, this is Kathy. Kathy, this is Dave. Come on, darling. Dewey walks off with Dave's wife, leaving him with Kathy. (laughs) So, where are you from? Dave looks awkwardly at Kathy. Hi there. Back on stage, the band performs. Guilty. I'm guilty as charged. Sam 
kicks out a quick solo. I ain't asking God to forgive my sins. Take a good look and you'll know where I've been. I'm dancing with the devil every night and every day. People pay attention to the things that I say. Now, if you're saying my love is too large. Dewey walks through a back alley. Then I'm guilty. 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 Dewey continues sadly fucking a groupie. God damn it, this is a dark fucking period. Dewey takes a drink. Guilty as charred. Dewey walks up to a shady dealer. Hey, man, you got the stuff? Yeah, I got a little stuff. Drugs, I mean, you got drugs? Yes, I have drugs. Good, because I need to buy some drugs. Are you asking me to sell you some of my drugs? That's what I'm asking. I'm asking to buy some of the drugs that you are dealing. Let me see your money. Dewey pulls out a stack of cash. Let me see your drugs. The dealer pulls out a bag of pills. How much of my money to buy some of your drugs? $50. Here's $50. Give me $50 worth of drugs. A large bag of pills plops into Dewey's hand. A whole bag? A cop bursts in front around the corner. Freeze! Dewey sees the cop. Put your hands above your head. More cops come running up. It's not what it looks like. and runs. Stop! On stage, Dewey finishes up the song. You got me. Guilty. Guilty. Dewey sits in the back of a squad car under arrest. Come on, Mr. Cox. How about it? Look over here. I'm guilty as charged. A camera flashes on stage. Dewey holds out his hands in mock cuffs. The song finishes and the lights go out. Interior, prison, later. Dewey sits in a cell, twirling a cigarette. Cox, we got a visitor. Dewey steps out of his bed. Prison has changed me. Interior, prison meeting room, later. Dewey sits with Lahaim at a table. I understand the common man in a way I never did before. I've seen misery and suffering, the likes of which you'll never know. In some ways, it's hardened me. In other ways, it's opened my heart. I know what it's like to listen to the sound of your own tears clinking on a jailhouse toilet. And I know what it's like to have nothing left but hope. And then they take that hope away. And you find that hope again in the Bible. And then they take your Bible away. You've only been in here three hours. It doesn't matter. I gotta get out of here so I can bring joy to the men back in here. But I don't want to live with them. I'm not an animal. I'm an artist. I'm a singer-songwriter. You know how rare that is in this age? Lean closer. Dewey leans in. I'm going to speak to you in my language so that the gods can understand what I am saying. I understand. They want to lock you up for 20 years. There must be something you can do. I'm 21 years old. I have a whole life ahead of me. We think we we can get you off, but uh, you're going to have to... uh, Baseball. Baseball? Well, I am nods. What do I have to do? You have to go into the, the rehab. Rehab? Rehab. Dewey isn't getting it. Rehab? Oh, rehab. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. Interior. Try to make me go to rehab, rehab. later. Dewey rises in bed in the midst of withdrawals. Doctor, doctor. A doctor runs in. I'm so cold. The doctor checks Dewey's pulse. We need more blankets. We need more blankets. Interior rehab a day later. Dewey writhes in bed covered in blankets. Doctor. The nurse, the doctor runs in. I'm so hot. I think he has too many blankets. Fewer blankets. 
Fade to interior rehab next day. Dewey arrives in bed. Oh, I want to go at the same time! He needs more blankets and he needs less blankets. I'm afraid you're right. Interior rehab, Dewey's bed. Later, Dewey thrashes. I uh, can't stop moving my arms and legs. I got too much freedom. Get the restraints. Restraints. Interior rehab, Dewey's bed. Later, Dewey thrashes. Now in restraints. Ah, uh, my balls! It's my ball. Nurse, his balls. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, thank you, nurse. Mm-hmm. Interior rehab, lower chamber. Later, Dewey sits in a tub. Covered with leeches, he groans quietly. Boo hoo! Boo hoo! Ah! Dewey looks up and sees the ghost of his brother Nate. Who are you? Me! Nate, your big brother! Nate? Are you halting me? Dude, I just came back to say, what's become of you? And also, you can do it! You can do it? I mean, look, it, it's a little general, but I'm trying to be encouraging. I appreciate it. Hey, brothers do anything for each other, right? Yeah, you name it. Well, Nate, I need you to do one little thing for me. Of course. What do you want me to do, Dewey? Go get me some drugs. Drugs? The nurse actually said that you were going to ask me for drugs. I spoke to her on the way in, and I don't think I'm supposed to do that. Go get me some cough syrup. About ten bottles of cough syrup. Oh, cool. Hey, do I look like a fucking idiot to you? Just go give me the fucking drugs. I'm coming in leeches. You know what? I'm going to leave you to your treatment and your leeches. You put me in a totally uncomfortable position. <laughs> you go to the doctor and you tell him I need to lose some weight. You get, go get your own damn drugs, do it, Cox. Maybe I don't believe in you. Wait, Nate, come back. Nate starts waving his hands as if he's fading. I don't believe in you. Don't make me rehab. Nate. Nate. Dewey thrashes in the tub. Interior, rehab, Dewey's bed, montage. Dewey's friends come by to check in on him one by one. Dave looks at Dewey. Dewey, my wife sends her love, asshole. Theo sings while holding his bass. Dewey, tall and powerful like a Greek or Roman god. I hold the hem of your garment and I will walk behind you. Sam checks in. Hey, Dewey. I was just over in Ray Charles' room. He says hi. Pa checks in. Dewey, I don't know if you can hear me in there, but the wrong kid died. Sam hangs with the nurse. Dewey, do you mind if we get stoned in here? Oh, he can't hear you. He's going to die anyway. Dewey screams in his bed, fading into unconsciousness. Oh, wait, he's back. Nope, out again. Interior rehab many days later. Dewey lies asleep in bed, a book across his chest. A shadow crosses his face as Darlene sits on the bed. Are you ready to come home, Dewey Cox? Dewey wakes and sees her, backlit by the sun, looking angelic. Darlene. I can never get you out of my head. Me neither. I could never stop thinking about you. But I wasn't, but I wasn't going to be no homewrecker. Now that I'm your only wife, though, it seems different. I'm a new man, Darlene. Prison and rehab have changed me. All these blankets have saved my life. I think you're finally ready to be the man I always thought you could be. She moves in for a kiss, but as he closes in, she retreats. As she goes to kiss him, Dewey pulls back. He tries to kiss her again, and she pulls back. She tries to kiss him, he pulls back. He tries, she pulls back. She tries, he pulls back. Just fuck already. Dewey slams her into a wall and starts kissing her okay i didn't mean to go all nc-17 they kiss passionately until she throws dewey back into a table and pulls his pants off she knees dewey in the dick once twice thrice darlene crouches down let me get this off she stands and smacks him in the face with her high heel before kissing him again dewey starts choking her and she chokes him back I love you. I love you too. They kiss once more. Dewey pulls up his completely genuine John C. Riley abs and totally not a body double. Stop it. Oh my God. Dewey steps forward.
Go for it. We ready to go? Yep. Exterior Dewey's a California house years later. A party is going on. On screen, Berkeley, California, 1966. The band are all full on hippies and chilling at a picnic table set up. Hey boys, have you seen Dewey? I think I saw him in the barn with that long hair guy. Oh yeah, he was talking to Charlie, Charlie Manson. Oh, his music is horrible, but he's a really nice guy. Oh, couldn't be nicer. Yeah, yeah. Darlene walks into the house. Interior, Dewey's California house. Moments later, Dewey sits on the couch alone, plucking away at a guitar. Darlene enters and finds him. Come on, Dewey, it's almost time for Dewey's cake. All right, it's just... It's hard for me to sit around at some birthday party when I know there's so much injustice going on in this world. I know. My daddy was right. I can't spend all my time thinking about Dewey Cox no more. I gotta think about the other people. Like your family? No, I mean like people that's having injustices done to them. Like women and midgets and such. I mean, it's 1966, darling. And baby, I'm feeling it. I know. The 60s are an important and exciting time. Aren't they? It's like there's something happening here. And what it is ain't exactly obvious. I have to try to help people with my music. Uh, some people are saying that your new music sounds a lot like Bob Dylan. Interior press conference later. Dewey sits in front of a cluster of reporters in old black and white footage. Well, maybe Bob Dylan sounds a lot like me. How come nobody ever asked Bob Dylan? How come you sound a lot like Dewey Cox? Interior, music hall, intercut. Dewey sings on stage. Very Bob Dylan. Mailboxes drip like lampposts in the twisted birth canal of the Coliseum. Rim job fairy teapots mask the temper tantrum. Oh, say can you see em? Stuffed cabbage is the darling of the laundromat. The mouse with the overbite explained how the rabbits were ensnared. Backstage, Dave stands with Theo. What the hell is this song about? I have no idea. You guys are idiots. This song is very deep. Inside the three-eyed monkey within inches of his toaster oven life. Interior press conference. Reporters raise their hands. Uh, what do your parents think about your protest songs? What do your parents think about my protest song, Mr. Time Magazine? Exterior, park, later. Dewey sings to a small crowd, all cheering. All the elevator buttons, so incredibly high. I stand today for the midgets, half the size of a regular guy. The crowd holds up signs. On the edge of the crowd stands a group of little people. So let me hold you, little man, as the parade passes by. Let me hold you, little man. We'll make believe you can fly. Some of the signs read short some of the sign some of the signs read short power and short panther party. You shout for me to put you down, but I'm marching today for your cause. I'm banging the drum. Your big day will come when they remake the Wizard of Oz. The crowd nods in agreement. So let me hold you, little man. Pretend that you're flying in space. Let me hold you, little man, so the dog will stop licking your face. One of the little people raises a hand at that line in solidarity. Interior press conference. The reporters continue to ask questions. Mr. Cox, why are you going to India? Well, uh, I'm searching for something, if you must know, and I'm fixing to do some meditating with the Maharishi. The Dewey Cox needs India right now. And Heck, I reckon India needs Dewey Cox too. Interior, Maharishi's tent. 
India later. Dewey and the band sit in an extravagant tent, a familiar band sitting across from them. Um, 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 only through meditation can we begin to understand our role. We're nothing but grains of sand. That was freaking transcendental, Paul McCartney. Don't you agree, John Lennon? Yes, Dewey Cox. With meditation, there is no limit to what we can imagine. What do you think, George Harrison of the Beatles? I don't know. When you're speaking of transcendentalism, it's like, you know, where do you go? What sort of path do you take, you know? I think we're all just drifting about when you begin to wonder about it and it's as if it doesn't exist in the first place. But then of course it does. So I think it's more, I think it's not so much of an answer, it's more of a question. And honestly, I'm just trying to get some more songs on the album, you know? And as Ringo Starr, I'm not so interested in meditation. I just like to have fun. He flashes a peace sign. Ringo, can you pass the puff? We learned to smoke this from Bob Dylan. We're friends with him because, of course, we are the Beatles. Dewey and his band laugh. <laughs> I like the little one. It's so dark in this tent. It smells like lunch meat. Reminds me when we, the Beatles, before we were in our psychedelic phase, the four Beatles, us. From Liverpool. Yes, we are from Liverpool. We used to play those dark clubs in Hamburg. Remember that, Paul? Of course I remember. I'm not dead. Or am I? <laughs> it, it was a cavern, that club. Do you, if you recall? Of course, I booked them. I'm the leader of the Beatles. Uh, which one of you writes which song? All the good ones are mine. He does the ones that are shit. <laughs> Hilarious. Number nine. Really great. Oh, yesterday. He writes the one that are all, there's no God. I'm a fucking asshole. And I write the ones that are beautiful and great. And then he'll jump in with a yeah, yeah, yeah. I write the songs about peace and love. He writes Susidio. Communism is the best. I'm a commie. That's his song. Me? I wrote Taxman. Well, I have to say, I like your stuff. It's pretty good, and uh, most of your records I really enjoy. Uh, we're big fans of your records, too. We like to think that Hard Day's Night was our guilty as charged. Great record. Excellent album. We learned a lot from you. Great record. Oh, we're real big fans of y'all. Huge fans. You're almost as good as the monkeys. God's great. I think I might adjourn to another dimension, take some LSD. Do you care to join me? Yeah, let's do that. Can to join us for some LSD? Do it. It's good for you. Built by scientists, it is. The surgic. The CIA invented it, so it's very safe. It's vitamins for the soul. Well, Ringo Starr, we are here for meditation. Mm, not for medication. But it's not technically medication. It's more of a relaxation benefit for your brains. Guru, you are the least famous person in the room. No offense, but these are the Beatles and I'm Dewey Cox. Maybe just chime in when it's appropriate. Dewey sighs and points to his wedding ring. Got to check in with headquarters. Come on, Dewey Cox. Think you might enjoy it. Open up your mind to a new experience, a new level of consciousness like we do because we are. The Beatles. Everybody's got something to hide. Ringo taps his shoulder. Right, except for me and my monkey, I know. Why don't you just let him decide? If he wants to take LSD, he'll take it. He doesn't have to listen to you. You're not the boss of him. Don't tell me what to say and what not to say, Paul McCartney. I'm sick of you being so dark when I'm so impish and whimsical. I'm sick of it. Oh, hey, everybody. I'm sick of it. I've got a new brand new mantra. 
Om, om, Paul McCartney can suck my balls. Oh, I've got another one. Om, Paul's a big fat cunt. I don't know why you two don't just let me write more songs. I, I just sit here while my guitar quietly whimpers. Well, you're the quiet one, so why don't you shut the fuck up? I've got a song about an octopus. Jam it up your ass. You're lucky we still let you play the drums. Wow, there seems to be a, a rift happening between the Beatles. <laughs> I wonder if your song will still be shit when I'm 64. Great sword. Paul dives at John. No! Stop it! You bastard! You fat bastard! Beatles, please stop fighting here in India. Let them go. Let, let them work it out. Taste it. Right there in the buttocks. Bastard. Interior tent later. Dewey sits with Darlene. Dewey, you've been living clean for three years now, and it's done a world of good, has it not? Look, I know I've had my trouble with drugs in the past, but I'm addicted to coke, weed, booze, loot, and speed. Not LSD. Nobody gets addicted to LSD. It was invented by scientists. Ringo Starr just told me. I heard that doing LSD can awaken your demons. Dewey <laughs> scoffs. I ain't got no demons gonna get woke. Dewey laughs. Darlene is still <laughs> unsure. If you promise, it'll just be this one time. Okay, let's go drop acid with the Beatles. Interior, Maharishi's tent, India, later. Dewey and Paul McCartney drop a tab of acid onto their tongues. Exterior, Beatles Yellow Submarine LSD trip, timeless. An eye opens on a cartoon reality. Animated Beatles riding by on a four-seated bike. The flying bike lands and the Beatles turn to face Dewey. Hello, Dewey. Welcome to your LSD trip. Paul honks the horn on the bike, which produces a brain in lieu of a sound. Where everything's a cartoon. We're the trippy cartoon Beatles. Look at that. It's a flying fish. Yep, that's exactly what it is. A big ass fish. Flying, smoking a pipe. Totally trippy. A cartoon Dewey crosses to them. Wow, this LSD's all right. I like being a trippy cartoon. Just keep thinking happy thoughts, Dewey. I'd hate for this to turn into a bad trip. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The animated sky darkens. Uh-oh. What's, what's that scary music? The hills are slowly replaced with several hands flipping Dewey the bird. I had an unhappy thought. Oh, uh, it's a bad trip. Bad trip, bad trip. Machete with legs is jogging toward Dewey. Help! Trippy machete! The trippy machete cuts Dewey in half. Oh, fuck me! I can see my large colon! Interior, Maharishi's tent. In yeah. reality, Dewey sits up in terror. Oh, I guess I do have some demons. You all right, Cox? Uh, I don't know. You want to do more, some more LSD? Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> Dewey laughs and falls back. Fade to eight months later. Exterior, Dewey's California house. Morning. Darlene stands on the porch with little Schwartzberg. Mr. Schwartzberg, you're his longtime manager. Maybe you can talk to him. Uh, well, uh, what's the problem? He's been on that trampoline for four days. Dewey bounces on a trampoline. You've got to talk some sense into him. I'm worried. Schwartzberg approaches the trampoline. Well, uh, uh, Dewey, as your manager, I have to tell you, I I'm concerned. I think the LSD has changed you. It has changed me. It's opened my mind right up. I'm reinventing music. I'm doing something new that I call schmusic. You've been recording the same song for eight months. You're not even close to being finished. That's because this record is like, is different than any other thing I've, I've 
made. I told you, it's giving me my masterpiece, the one I remembered for. This one's for my brother. What brother? Nothing. Never mind. It's private. Interior recording studio later. An orchestra is playing what some might call music, but what I'm pretty sure Dewey calls schmusic. I just close my eyes when I fantasize, much to my surprise, I'm only half the size that I used to be. Doop, ba ba doop, shoop ba doop, shoop ba doop, ba doop, ba doop. A didgeridoo starts up. Bye bye, pastures of plenty. Sam turns and smacks a giant bell with a mallet. I don't know where I will roam. Interior recording studio booth continuous. Dave and Theo, along with Darlene and Schwartzberg, listen to the song. This is not a good song. It's like five songs on top of each other at the same time. Some kind of concerto. Now that the blade has been swung. There's a fucking goat in there, people. Just let him work it out. Masterpieces take time. The goat bleats. Oh. Hear that? I think that goat's been singing more than I am in this damn song. Interior recording studio booth later. Dewey listens to the track. Not there yet. He turns the song off and turns to face the band, stroking his beard. Still not finished yet. I'm hearing more Aboriginal percussionists, and I want an army of didgeridoos. 50,000 didgeridoos! Uh, uh, folks, can we have a moment with Dewey? The recording crew leaves. What the hell are these songs about? You're saying about cutting people in half. <laughs> Working something out. It's called a metaphor. Well, what are you working out? It's a secret. That's why it's called a metaphor. It's a secret. That's what metaphor means, secret. I just don't see why you got to throw away the recipe is all. I mean, why don't we just go in there, lay down some tracks like what we always did? Yeah, why can't we just walk hard? Yeah, do we? What do we need all these people for? I don't need people around me stifling me. So if you don't like it, there's the door. Ooh, are you saying you don't need us no more? Not unless you can open your mind and learn to play the fucking theremin. The beat. Fuck you, Dewey. Yeah, fuck you, Dewey. In 20 years, not once have you thrown a woman my way. You don't think we like cheating on our wives, too? You never once paid for drugs. Not once. You pay that chip more than you pay us. I had to borrow from the chip to get a mortgage on my house. And those stupid Siamese glass cats you get us every year for Christmas. I don't want any more Siamese glass cats. The Siamese glass cat is a symbol of nobility in ancient Egypt. Fuck nobility. Fuck ancient Egypt. Fuck cats. And you never once paid for drugs. Not once. And you slept with my wife. You slept with me too, and I've had confused feelings about that for 10 years now. And you never once paid for drugs. Not once. You're on your own, Dewey Cox. We're leaving. Theo and Dave walk away. Sam locks eyes with Dewey. Well, I guess it's the end of a chapter in your life, Dewey Cox. Sam leaves, and Dewey is alone. Interior recording studio bathroom moments later, Dewey bursts into the room and tears the sink off the wall, smashing it onto the floor. Interior recording studio later, Dewey sits alone as Darlene joins him. What's happened to you, Dewey Cox? Stay out of this, Darlene. Traveling away the people who love you most. I don't need anybody, Darlene. All I need is my music. This ain't about your music, Dewey. It's about the drugs. Honey, I told you I'm going to quit again just as soon as the record's done. Whenever that might be, you can't rush a masterpiece. One of the aboriginal percussionists walks in and, hey, I've got a better idea. Fuck this. Just leaves. You need to take a break, Dewey. You need to clean yourself up. Otherwise, 
Otherwise what? Otherwise, I can't be married to you no more. I know you don't mean that. I believe you know that I do. This shakes Dewey. Okay. 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 We'll take a break. I will take a break. And you'll and you'll quit the drugs. And I will quit the drugs. Dewey, oh baby. She rushes in to hug him. I've been praying about this day for so long. As the hug breaks, Dewey pops something into his mouth. What did you just put in your mouth? Gum. You ain't chewing no gum. Dewey swallows. Candy? What did you put in your mouth? It's PCP! Oh, you just said... The PCP hits. Wow. Dewey starts running out of the room. I'm going to town! Interior, in town, moments later. Dewey races into the town square, wearing just his tidy whities He runs into traffic, cars honking their horns at him. Dewey slaps his hand down on the hood of the car and starts trying to lift the car. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dewey launches the car into the air and into a storefront. He launches a mailbox into a window, shattering it. Say with me, folks, he's going to wreck it. A small squad of cops sees the chaos and perks up. Dewey sees the cop cars racing down the street toward him. He shoves officers away as he races for escape. Darlene races down the street. Dewey, get off that building. It's inappropriate. Dewey is now climbing one of the buildings like King Kong. Oh, shit. Another John C. Riley movie. Get, get off there, Dewey. Dewey Cox. <laughs> Dewey laughs like the devil. You give me no choice. It breaks my heart. Ka-ka! But I'm leaving you. I'm Zeus! Dewey cackles from the rooftop. <laughs> no mortal can stop me! I'm Zeus! Interior prison. A cell door slams on Dewey. Interior prison meeting room. Rehab? Rehab. Dewey shakes his head in agreement. Interior, rehab, basement, later. Dewey sits in a bathtub, electrodes on his temple. Electricity buzzes and shocks Dewey. With a shock, the ghostly form of Nate appears. Nate smiles at Dewey. Nate? Suddenly, Nate shifts to a grown man, looking like a super bad adult. Ah! Nate looks at Dewey like, what the shit? Dewey screams. What I'd look like if I had grown up into an adult and perhaps hadn't been murdered or whatever. I just came to tell you you need to get your shit together. I know. I've fallen well, again. Will you listen to yourself? You keep whining like a little bitch. If I was alive right now, I'd be fucking president of the United States. I'd be on the moon walking around looking for aliens to kill. You know why dad liked me better than you? Because I was better than you when I played the piano. I was fucking awesome. Well, you think it's easy for me since you're gone? I got no sense of smell. I got no sense of smell. I can't smell anything. You can't, you can't, you can't smell anything. I got no sense of having legs, Dewey. <laughs> no life. I'm dead because of somebody. I'm not going to point any names right now. Decided to murder me with a machete. But Nate. I can't smell, touch, feel. I can't even masturbate. You were trying to jerk off with a ghost hand. You ever tried to jerk off with a ghost hand? Nothing. Nate sighs. I'm just trying to say, you need to fix this shit. You need to get out of that bathtub. You need to start writing some songs again. Disco. Cut to the beach. Later, Dewey runs along the sand on screen. Malibu, California, 1976. Healthy living is agreeing with Dewey. Interior, beach house, later, mini montage. Dewey makes a morning smoothie. Dewey rolls over in bed next to Cheryl Teagues. She stretches and looks at him. Good morning, Dewey Cox. Morning, Cheryl Cox Teagues. Dewey sits at a piano struggling to write a song. Dewey gets up from his couch during a great party. Everybody good? He walks across and is stopped by Patrick Duffy. Whoa, Dewey, great party, great party. 
Thanks, Patrick Duffy from Dallas. They clink glasses. <laughs> Mingle. Enjoy yourself. Have sex with anybody you want. Duffy looks at the women on either side of him. <laughs> Can do. Dewey sits with a guitar, writing on a pad of paper. Stay with it. Stay with it. He slaps his hand down. No, why can't I write a fucking song anymore? Dewey smashes the guitar on the ground. Dewey flips the piano in rage. Dewey sighs as he sits in bed with three women. Interior, Dewey's beach house, music room. Dewey sets a framed photo of Darlene on the couch and tries to write. He puts the pen down and turns to a harp. I had it all. I had it all. And then I fucked up. God damn it. Dewey throws the harp on the ground. Interior, Dewey Beach House. Later, Dewey stands in his lounge talking to Schwartzberg. Schwartz, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with me. I got the song block. Song block. You know what? I don't need to write any songs. I'll just do my old one. We'll do an oldies tour. I'll do Walk Hard. Dewey, Walk Hard is over 20 years old. Well, a lot of people like my old songs. Old people like your old songs. May I make a suggestion? I got a call from CBS. They want to do a show with you. Television, Dewey, it's the way in the people's hearts. Interior TV studio later. An audience applauds as a disco rendition of Walk Hard starts. Live from Burbank, California, it's the Dewey Cox Show. And now your host, Dewey Cox. The stage lights up and Dewey is written in the set. The W turns around and Dewey walks out of it. Full disco. Walk hard. 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 The, a new band grooves along with this rendition of Walk Hard. Dewey finishes with a smile. Walk hard. The image freeze frames and stay tuned flashes on screen. Stay tuned. When we come back, Cox sings David Bowie. With the singing, swinging Cox dancers, Dewey dances the robot with the intro of the song. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our mind. Dewey salutes on a screen. We'll be right back with more Cox after this. Interior TV studio later. Dewey stands on stage in a bad caveman costume, rehearsing a sketch. I mean, what do I have to do to get you on my bone? Invent fire? And then huge laugh and we all go to commercial. Yeah. Dewey starts leaving the stage toward Schwartzberg, who clearly isn't enjoying the show. All right, take five. Hey, great rehearsal, Dewey. Very funny sketch. Thank you. But have you seen the ratings? Every week we're getting our asses kicked by the Incredible Hulk. Okay, that's a great show. Well, last night's episode was a very special episode. They revealed that the Incredible Hulk has an evil twin, and he's not green. He's red. Red Hulk. Nice reference. I know. It was amazing. Did you see it? You can't compete with that. But listen, we do need to do more promotion. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to introduce people to the new Dewey Cox. In fact, I got a girl here right now to interview. She's from the local affiliate in Dallas. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not so good with interviews. Puffy, it's a puff piece. It's, it's very puffy. All you have to do is remind the audience that you're not mainlining acid anymore. And that the show, it's a lot of fun, right? You're having fun. Yeah. And it's on every Thursday night at 8 after the local news. It's on every Thursday night at 8 o'clock right after the local news. And I'm not mainlining acid. Anymore. Well, I'm not, not going to promise that. But whatever you're comfortable with. I don't smoke angel dust anymore. So don't be afraid. Something like that. Interior TV studio interview minutes later. Dewey sits with Gail, who doesn't love some Jane Lynch, who's perky and ready for the interview. So why don't you tell us about your new TV program? <laughs> well, Gail, it's a variety show. I do a little bit of everything. I do some singing, some dancing, chatting with the guests, the skits, the monologues, the comedy. Wonderful comedy. It really is a lot of fun. <laughs> well, we're going to have more fun when we come back from this, from a word with our sponsors. Don't go away. They break and she instantly drops the facade. Phew. Okay. You know what? I got to tell you, my heart goes out to you. I know what it's like to be on a piece of shit television program because I'm hosting one right now. Excuse me? 
Must want to blow your fucking brains out. I bet. <laughs> I know I do. Rolling, the facade comes back up. A big smile from Gail. And we're back with Mr. Dewey Cox. And we're talking about the fun he's having on his show. But right now, let's talk about your lovely wife, Darlene. How's she doing? Well, Darlene and I separated some years ago, Gail. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't do my homework. And to answer your question, I miss her terribly. Well, that's sweet. Now tell me, why don't you talk about your parents? They've got to be proud of you. Well, my mama is dead. And uh, my pa and I uh, don't speak to each other, so we're not very close. Uh, we can always cut around this if it gets too pathetic. I know you got a whole slew of them. Uh, what's going on with them? Tell us about well, your kids. Well, I'm uh, locked in a custody battle at this time. Uh, custody is trying to be forced upon me, which I don't think is right. You know, if you don't uh, want the responsibility of children, you should be able to walk away from that. And apparently a couple of my ex-wives don't feel the same. So, uh, yeah, but uh, but wherever my kids are, I'm sure they're watching the Dewey Cox Show on Thursday nights at 8, right after the local news. And uh, I just wanted to say to everyone out there, I'm no longer mainlining acid or smoking PCP. It's official. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, why don't we uh, lighten it up just a little bit here? Tell me, you're so busy, Dewey Cox. Do you have time to stop and smell the roses? I've got no fucking sense of smell. All right, I'm done. Dewey gets up and walks out of the interview. I mean, come on, do a little research, folks. Come on. That would have been great information to know. Yeah. Interior, Dewey's beach house that night. Dewey walks through the kitchen in his undies. He opens the fridge and thinks for a moment. Yeah. Dewey grabs a whole bottle of champagne. He closes the door on the fridge, and there stands Ghost Nate. Dewey. Nate! You were supposed to be double great for the both of us. What the fuck is this bullshit? Ah, uh, No. All I'm asking is that you write one masterpiece that is the culmination of your entire life. How hard is that? I'm empty, Nate. What do I do? Dewey, who's the one person in your life who's made you feel like shit? Oh. You need to talk to him, Dewey. Oh, I don't know. You need to hug him. I've been putting this off my entire life. You're right. Interior, cop. Cox Farm. Later, Pa Cox tosses bags of seed, singing to himself. Long kid died. Boom, 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 boom. Dewey slowly enters. Hello, Paul. Paul looks up before dropping his bag of feed. What do you want? I feel there's some things I need to say to you. Well, go on. Talk. I realize that I never really said I was sorry for what happened to Nate. Paul, I've spent my entire life trying to find love with wives and hotel clerks and toll booth operators and giraffes and monkeys and trampolines and men who dress like women and, and men who look like you. And, and I realized the only person I ever wanted to love me was you, Paul. Paul hangs his head for a moment. Dewey, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, Paul. I just wanted to come here and tell you that I love you, and I always have. I appreciate you finding the courage to say that, Dewey. Pa starts stepping toward Dewey. But there's only one way to settle this. Pa tosses something to Dewey. Who catches it? It is a machete. Machetes. What? Pa starts spinning the machete over his head. The right kid is going to die tonight. He swings the machete at Dewey, who blocks the strike. Pa strikes repeatedly as Dewey keeps blocking. Oh, you were Ha! Pa turns and cuts a ladder in half with one clean stroke. Ha! Pa swings again, missing Dewey, but cutting a picture of Nate in half. They lock machetes. Pa headbutts Dewey in the face. As Dewey stumbles back, Pa knocks the machete from his hand. Pa spins his machete over his head again. No, Pa, no! I've been waiting for this for a long time. You have? Pa swings the machete and Dewey jumps back, the blade barely missing his gut. But there's too much momentum, and the blade continues on into Pa's side. He looks shocked. Oh no! Thump. Oh my goodness. 
Pa is beside his own legs, halved. I have myself. Pa! No, Pa! Lou, I, I guess I never realized until this moment just how easy it is to accidentally cut someone in half. It is, right? I'm sorry for blaming you, Dewey. Of course you didn't mean to cut Nate in half. It's all so obvious now. Pa! I should have been a better father to you, Dewey. I wish I spent more time playing catch with you and less time training my body and mind to kill you in a machete fight. You'd be a better father than I was, Dewey. I'll try, Paul. It shouldn't be that hard. In case I don't make it. Paul, you're going to make it. It's the 1970s. They had all kinds of procedures. They can attach tops to bottoms now. Hang in there. Dewey, I love, I love. Pa closes his eyes. You love what? Pa, you love what? Dewey shakes his dad's top half. Come on, just one more word! No! Dewey screams and knocks over his pa's legs. Interior, Dewey's beach house. Later, Dewey bursts into his house and a party is going on. I want all you fucking parasites out of my house right now! Patrick Duffy sits on the couch with Cheryl Tees. Duffy stands. I said everybody out! Dewey grabs a vase and shatters it against the floor. Patrick Duffy saunters toward Dewey, cocky. It's you, you arrogant cocksucker. How dare you? What happened to you, Dewey? I don't know what's happened to me, but I know what's happened to you. Patrick Duffy took a beating. Dewey punches Duffy in the face, dropping him to the floor. Dewey grabs him and continues punching. Stop it, Dewey, you son of a bitch. Dewey keeps punching again and again and again. Cheryl manages to pull Dewey off. Stop it, Dewey. Stop it, Dewey. Patrick Duffy was only saying what we all were feeling. You get the hell away from me, Cheryl Cox Teagues. Dewey runs away towards interior Dewey's beach house moments later. The bathroom. Oh, no. Not the sink. Not the sink. Dewey tears into the room and stops at the sink. If you tear that sink off the wall, I am leaving you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Dewey rips it from the wall and looks at her. I am leaving you, Dewey Cox. No! Dewey follows after her. But I'm weeping. Interior, Dewey's beach house later. Dewey tears through the house, trashing the place, smashing his guitar into golden records, breaking his headlights, shredding pillows. On the inside. Dewey angrily clips the heads off of each flower in his garden. Dewey thrashes his Zen garden and takes a jackhammer to the floor. Maybe you should shed a tear. Dewey is using a hacksaw to cut his couch in half. Interior, Dewey's beach house. Later, Dewey is still sawing. For me. Dewey opens the silverware drawer and starts pulling out each piece of cutlery and starts bending them one by one, eventually looking more annoyed that he has to finish all of them instead of just stopping. Interior, Dewey Beach House. The next morning, Dewey sits in the ruins of his living room, crying. A young boy walks up to the uh, open patio door. Dad. Dewey turns to face the boy. Yes? What is it, son? I was just wondering if you want to have a catch. The boy nods. Son, there is nothing I want more than to have a catch with you. Son, forgive me, this is going to sound strange, but what is your name again? Well, I'm Dewey Jr., but my friends call me Dewdrop. Well, Dewey sniffles and stands. It's nice to formally meet you, Dewey. Dewey shakes the boy's hand. Exterior, Dewey's beach house. Later, Dewey and Dewdrop toss a ball back and forth. So this is catch. This is what I've been missing out on all those years on the road. Dewdrop huh? can't seem to catch the ball. I like it. It's wonderful. You throw it to me, I throw it back to you. It's so simple, and yet... 
So powerful. Doom drop drops the ball again. Maybe that's his nickname because he drops everything. I'll go home. Well, you're really terrible at this game. Well, I mean, you never really played with me before. How am I supposed to learn? A boy needs a dad. Yes, he does. Well, I reckon we got some lost time to make up, you and me. And all your brothers and sisters, too. How many of you are there now? Uh, 22 brothers and sisters, and also 14 half-brothers and half-sisters. Holy shit. This may take a while. Exterior, Dewey Beach House, catch montage. Dewey tosses a ball to Doof. That's real good. Dewey tosses a ball to Dude. Dude throws the ball back and right into Dewey's gut. <laughs> Duina tosses a ball to Dewey. It's so beautiful. Duella catches a ball. Duelliot catches a soft lob ball. Duford catches a ball and tosses it back. Duman catches a ball. A grown ass Filipino man catches the ball. He tosses it back to Dewey, who looks confused. Are you sure you're one of mine? The man says nothing. Dewey travels in a bus with his children. Dewey teaches his kids how to shear a sheep. The years pass as Dewey continues playing catch. Dewey tends a garden with his kids. Let's go ahead and taste some dirt. Dewey eats a bit. That's good dirt. Yeah, that's good dirt. Dewey helps his kids study. Now, on the surface, Macbeth is about revenge, but what is the subtext? A power struggle for the Scottish royal family. That's what it is. I just gave it to you. That one's a mulligan. Exterior park years later. Dewey catches a ball and tosses it to Dewey, who misses the catch. Dewey goes chasing down the ball. The ball rolls to a stop at the feet of Darlene, who has aged beautifully. Hello, Dewey. Darlene. It's Dewey's birthday. I brought her a present. She holds a long clothing box under her arm. It's a bracelet. How's Glenn Campbell? He and I split up a long time ago. Oh, really? It's just me these days at age 50. Would you care to take a walk with me, Darlene Madison? She smiles. Exterior, park walking path. Dewey and Darlene walk together. Well, I haven't been playing too much music the last few years. I realize now I wasn't much of a father when I was out on the road. Now this is what makes me happy. Not the music, not getting high, just my family. It's all I care about. And that family is missing one piece, Darlene. My God, you're as beautiful as the day I met you. They move closer to kiss. You don't want this dirty old cox. Oh, I want it more than ever. She hugs him tightly as Dewey breathes deep. Did you wash your hair today? I sure did. How could you tell? It smells terrific. A beat. Wait, what? I smelt it. You mean... I smelt it. Yeah? Oh. I can smell it again. I smelt it. Dewey buries his nose in her neck, <laughs> smelling deep. I smell you. Smell it. Oh, you've been driving a while. Oh, I smell it. I smelt it. Dewey dra- dives into the grass. Oh, I smelt it. Oh, God. It's a miracle. I smell you flowers. I smell you twig. I smell you horse shit. He lifts a huge turd and takes a big whiff. Oh, it's horrible. But I can smell it. Smell that shit, baby. I smell it. Interior, Dewey's land later. Dewey, silver-haired now, smells a flower. Anyway, that's when I learned that quaaludes and water skiing do not mix. He pats the shoulder of a boy next to him. You remember that. How come you did all that stuff, Grandpa? Oh, well, well, Dewey Rahim, I'll tell you, I was young and stupid then. I didn't understand a lot of things. I didn't understand that, uh, I think it had to do with how I was reared as a boy. But, you know, I got no complaints. It's been a beautiful ride. Beautiful ride? Inspiration. 
beautiful ride. Dewey, sweetheart, there's someone here to see you. Dewey turns to the porch to see Dreidel Laheim Wolowitz standing there. Mr. Cox. I'm sorry, have we met? You worked with my father, Kvetch Lahayam. You're Mr. Lahayam's boy? Dreidel Lahayam, that's me. Well, it's nice to meet you again, Dreidel Lahayam. Well, listen, Mr. Cox, there's, there's something I want to show you. Interior, Dewey's land, living room, moments later. Dewey, Darlene, and the kids watch the raunchiest music video you've ever seen. I never rock a fella, but I rock a Cinderella while he's shitting in between up his legs like a chilla. Dewey puts on his glasses. Time to play, make your mouth into a hole. Yo, to me how. I want to make you fucking hard. I'm so wet, I got to make you hard. Dreidel is dancing along to the track. Definitely a fan. Mr. Lahayam, how could you allow them to do such a thing with my husband's music? Through the roof, we're selling Lil Nutsack. That's the rapper. Sweet kid. Yeah, anyway, he's introduced a whole new generation to the magic of Dewey Cox. You could even play together. Oh, shit. Uh, you could even play together Cox and Lil Nutsack. Yeah, I mean, what a package. Uh, anyway, as if that was not enough, they're going to give Dewey the Lifetime Achievement Award next month. The Lifetime Achievement Award? Baby, that's wonderful. You go on TV, they give you the award, you play a song, it's a magical thing. Whoa, oh, I, I can't go on TV and play. What? Well, why not? Well, well, Dewey? I'm 71 years old. I don't even know if I can rock no more. Of course you can rock, sweetheart. Of course you can rock, sweetheart. Well, I don't know that I can rock. And besides that, I gave up that life for a reason. I'm afraid of the temptations, Darlene. You can do it, Dewey. I know you can. Just go out there and sing your song. I'm going to need my band. Various band retrieval montage. As Walk Hard plays, Dewey collects the band. Dewey walks up to a trailer. The door opens and out walks Dave. Dewey nods. Dave punches him in the face. Dewey falls to the ground. Oh, my hip. Dave helps Dewey back up. A door to an apartment opens, and there stands Theo, who instantly jumps into a hug with Dewey. The door to Sam's house opens. Dewey holds up a massive bag of weed. Sam happily takes the bag and gives Dewey a hug, never taking his eyes off the weed. The aged band walks down the street. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jewel, Lyle Lovett, and Jackson Brown. Interior music awards on stage. The three stands, the three stand at the mic performing. Walk hard. Hard. Down life's rocky road. Rocky road, walk bold. Hard. That's my creed, my code. my code. Interior Music Awards backstage. Dewey walks through the hall. Hi. Hey there. Hello. Oh, he is so cute. What are you doing later? I'm returning to the hotel with my family. Good night to you. Dewey leaves. Talk to my grandma. That's awesome. Interior Music Awards on stage. Ghost Face Killer. Walking hard, I'm a real hard walker. Fast on the trigger and I'm, I'm a smooth talker. My guns pop out like a jack in the box. I'll cut you in the half like Dewey Cox. Walk hard. Interior Music Awards backstage. Dewey opens a door to find Sam. Oh no. You're adorable. Sam. Sam turns around, surrounded by women. 
What are y'all doing in here? Do we get out of here? You don't want no part of this shit. Sam holds a small blue pill in his hand. What is it? It's medication for erectile dysfunction. It gives you a boner. Not to be used if you have pre-existing heart condition. If boners last for more than four hours, call more ladies. Sam chuckles. <laughs> well, that does sound tempting. But you know what, Sam? I really don't want no part of that shit. Did you hear what I said? It gives you a boner. Hate to let you down, old friend. But I don't want to succumb to the temptations. Interior Music Awards Backstage Hallway. My girl, my girl, my girl. I'm talking about my girl, my girl. All the temptations! Dewey hobbles down a hallway. Interior Music Awards on stage. Whoo! All right. Well, we heard him sing about walking hard. We learned a little something about how we wanted to walk. What do we think about when we think about Cox? He's been called the drifter. Also the shapeshifter, master chef, chameleon, problem child, the hard one, the white Indian, the giant midget. If Elvis and Buddy Holly are Kane the Nabel of rock and roll and Bruce Springsteen is Zachariah, Iggy Pop is Mes Mesozoa, and of course Neil Young is the wise prophet Ezekiel, then what does that make Dewey Cox? Well, I don't know what God. Interior Music Awards Backstage Hallway. We are back where we began. Um, Mr. Cox, I don't want to rush him, but he goes on in a minute. Interior Music Awards stage. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce for the first time on stage, 25 years, performing his final masterpiece that will sum up his entire life. Interior Music Awards backstage hallway. Mr. Cox? Do he turns to face the man? The one, the only. I'm ready. Sam smiles. Interior Music Awards on stage. Mr. Dewey Cox! The crowd stands and applauds. Darlene leads Dewey to the mic. Dewey lifts his guitar and nods to the audience. Thank you very much for that, ladies and gentlemen. You'll have to forgive me if I'm a little bit rusty. This is the first song I have written in a very long time. Hope you enjoy it. Dewey readies himself. Now that I have lived a lifetime's worth of days, finally I see the folly of my ways. The band joins in with him. So listen when I sing of the temptations of this world, fancy cars and needles, whiskey, flesh, and pearls. And then in the end, it's family and friends. Loving yourself, but not only yourself. Schmendrick sits in the audience with Dreidel. It's about the good walk and the hard walk and the young girls you've made cry. Edith sits in the audience with a young Latin man. She holds back tears. Miles sits in the audience with a blonde wig. It's about make a little music every day till you die. It's a beautiful ride. Beautiful ride. A beautiful ride. Dewey remembers his life. His ma leaving his home with Edith, glaring at Pa, Elvis pulling a knife. Beautiful ride. Dewey walks with his kids. Beautiful. Dewey helps Sam's wife birth her child. As I stand on the precipice of death, my perspective is enormous. Every leaf, every cloud, I see the hands which have formed us. And some days all you got is a nighttime graveyard walk. On the side of the stage, the ghosts of Pa, Ma, and Nate watch. Pa is finally enjoying himself. And you whistle some sweet melody to the ghost down at the dock. Dewey eyes ghost Nate, who flips him off. 
sing into your hand and lead the marching band. In the audience, a Schwartzberg has a heart attack. Don't you let him fade your colors gray. Oh, he's dead. Schwartzberg's ghost joins Dewey's family on the side of the stage. Because when all is said and done, when youth is spent and burned, you'll see that it's all about music, flowers, babies, sharing the good times, traveling not just for business, accepting your mortality. This is finally what I've learned. Beautiful ride montage. And then in the end, it's family and friends. Dewey walks with the band. Gail dances in Dewey's lap. Dewey and Pa are ready to fight in a hotel hallway when Pa pulls a gun. Loving yourself. Dewey plays guitar with Pa's top half, who strums a ukulele. But not only yourself. Dewey sings on stage. It's about the good walk and the hard walk. Dewey dances with the orchestra to his sh music. Dewey and Theo are at the dock stopping a drug bust. Dewey grabs Theo and uses him as a human shield. And the young girls you've made cry. Theo is riddled with bullets. It's about make a little music every day till you die. Theo stands on stage next to Dewey, definitely still alive. It's a beautiful ride. A beautiful ride. Beautiful ride. Dewey enters a bathroom and sees a line of sinks. He's going to wreck it and the internet. Dewey tears them all off the wall. <laughs> beautiful. Sorry, that's a dumb joke. Uh, beautiful ride. Dewey laughs with Dave and Bert, his roadie. His dick still out. Beautiful ride. Dewey thinks back to his first performance. Beautiful, beautiful ride. The crowd stands and cheers. Dewey puts his guitar behind him and waves to the crowd. The image freezes. Across the bottom, text reads, Dewey died three minutes after this performance. Duford Randolph Cox, 1936 to 2007. As the image fades, grainy black and white footage appears of the actual Dewey Cox. Walk hard. Walk hard. Walk hard. Walk hard. Fade to black. The end. And that's the movie. <laughs> we'll see you at the next 